working at the fisheries in Neon. Aren't you? Name's Boone Morgan, your new best friend on Neon. If you're here for a drink or listen to the music, I've got you covered. But if you're here for something a little more exciting, we have plenty of Aurora for sale. Not at the Astral Lounge, my friend. In fact, this is the only place authorized to sell Aurora by order of Administrator Bayou himself. And once you buy it, you can use it anywhere in the Neon that you'd like. Except the spaceport, of course. Then what are we waiting for? Let's set you up. Here, and take a look at the menu. Now, I'm not going to lie, the Aurora is a bit expensive, but <laughs> let's face it. Can you really put a price on pleasure? Excellent choice. The Sky Suite offers luxury and sophistication you won't find anywhere else in the settled systems. And since you'll be living in the same tower as the Astral Lounge, all of its pleasures and pageantry are only an elevator away. Well, of course, the Sky Suite features an open design with an emphasis on luxury. Whether you prefer the morning sky or a neon sunrise, the high ceilings and wall-sized windows will give you a full view of the city's splendor. Wonderful. Here's your key. The trade tower elevator will take you directly to your new home. And if there's anything I can provide to enhance the experience, let me know. Pretty amazing, isn't it? That's Borealis, only 19 years old, and yet she produces some of the most heart-pounding, trippiest electronic music you've ever heard. I don't know where she gets her inspiration, but I'm betting all that free Aurora she gets has something to do with it. Oh, Ben and I are good friends. <laughs> he personally gave me the job here at the Astral Lounge. Oh, he's a good man. Cares a lot about the citizens of Neon, making sure they're all employed and well taken care of. A real humanitarian. That depends on if you're hungry or thirsty. Of course, of course. Hope to see you again.
Yeah, sorry. I don't do autographs. <laughs> now that would be something new for a change. You can't even imagine how many people ask for an autograph or picture after we've been modding all night. It gets really annoying. Programming the beats? Turning the dials? Come on, stay with me here. Hey, I love my fans. I just don't like when they take things too far, you know? My music slate's gone. Completely vanished. I had all of my new songs figured out on that thing, and someone ripped me off. Total drag. Oh yeah, absolutely. It allows me to step away from myself for a while and harmonize with the universe. There's music out there, you know, if you listen. The trick is not getting hooked on that feeling. I got close to that state a few times, but reality and responsibilities always managed to pull me back. I started playing music when I was 10. My father had an old electronic keyboard he passed down to me, and I fell in love with the thing. By the time I was 15, I got my first track and started club hopping. I was pretty young, but with my father as manager, he watched my back. Four years later, and here I am, booked into the hottest club in the settled systems. <laughs> pretty crazy. There's something I need to talk to you about. Remember our last conversation, when you told me the artifacts made you feel like you were being pulled across the entire galaxy? Well, it got me thinking. So I dove into our archives and started looking through Constellation's older journal entries. Just because I wasn't familiar with the experience you described doesn't mean the same might have been true for my predecessor. Uh, unfortunately, no. Other than you and Barrett, there were no records of direct encounters with the artifacts. I have to admit, though, I did get more than a bit sidetracked reminiscing about old times. Oh, well, sure. It's not an emergency. Let me know when you have some time. I'm a little stoned right now. So, let's take it slow, okay? Hey there, what's up? Oh, man. Wow, that would be so cool. Yeah, please. I thought I sensed a decent aura around you when you walked up. Songs, lyrics, poems, all of my thoughts, basically. We're talking three years of stuff. It's not like I can just rewrite everything. Some of those moments of inspiration are long gone, out of my mind. That's why I write them down. The thing is, I perform here at the lounge every single night, which means I can't repeat the same set over and over. I have to keep it real. Exactly. So, anything you can do to help is appreciated. Oh, and if you're looking for a lead, talk to Micah. She works the bar at Euphorica, and she's a walking grapevine. Anyway, I got to figure out how I'm going to mod my next set. I'll see you around, okay? Hmm. Well, most of the people who come through here are fans. And they're either zoned or just digging the rhythms. That leaves collectors, competitors, or just a thief trying to make a cred. It could be anyone, really. People try to put a price on everything. It doesn't matter if it's music or the stars. If that price is big enough, you start attracting people with bad vibes and long knives. Only a matter of time before you get cut. Hope you enjoy the show. Yeah.
not, right? In space? Just do us all a favor and never turn into one of those spacers. Scum of the galaxy. Robbing, stealing, killing. Even the Crimson Fleet don't trust them. Remember our last conversation, when you told me the artifacts made you feel like you were being pulled across the entire galaxy? Well, it got me thinking, so I dove into our archives and started looking through Constellation's older journal entries. Just because I wasn't familiar with the experience you described, doesn't mean the same might have been true for my predecessor. Really? I'm surprised that I haven't. After reading those journals, all of the pleasant memories of my time spent with Aja just started flooding back. Aja Mamasa. She was the youngest member of Constellation when it was founded. Only took her 15 years to reach chair. Sorry, I sometimes get so caught up in my own bubble, I forget that I wasn't the first. Well, there's no reason to be jealous. They were just... I don't know. Different times. Aja was the one that taught me the ropes at Constellation, and took me under her wing as her protégé. <laughs> now that you mention it, you're probably right. Either way, we logged quite a few interesting discoveries together. Honestly, it wasn't so much what Aja and I discovered in our travels. It was the journey that was memorable. We catalogued unusual stellar phenomena, a few habitable worlds, and some unique life forms, but nothing SSNN would bother to report. Hmm, really? Well, for me, it was all about the quieter moments. There was... Nothing quite like sitting back and watching space bend while listening to Aja spin vivid stories to fill the time. Oh, I find that sort of cozy isolation the best way to really get to know someone. Yeah, you know, being alone in interstellar space, nothing but light years of black around you. Some people find that terrifying. I find it... comfortable. It helps me bond with my shipmates. At this point, I'd say you've graduated from protege and moved up the ladder. A bit. You know... All this talk about Aja reminds me that my time with her was a gift. I miss her dearly. No, she retired. Living on Porima 2 now, I think. Come to think of it, if we're ever out that far, perhaps we could pay her a visit and I could make proper introductions. You'll do. <laughs> Look, I don't expect you to be an exact copy of Aja. 
Your hunger for exploration, to pierce the veil and seek the unknown, it's a common bond that we share. I wouldn't have it any other way. I... I don't know if I deserve to be that close to anyone right now. If you knew about the things that I've done, the way my life's unfolded, I think your opinion of me might change. Please, give me some time. I... I, I, I have to go. Days are too short. Yes. Yeah. too long. Okay. Micah knows how to make a drink. If you're planning on using Aurora, we respectfully ask you do so in the Members' Lounge. I see. I'd be willing to divulge this information for the right price. Thank you for your business. The man you want goes by the name of Stratos. You'll find him at Madame Savage's. He's what you would call a fan of Miss Borealis's works. Or maybe fanatic is a more accurate term. Either way, he's the one you want. But you didn't hear it from me. He's one of the usual lowlifes you'll find at Madame Savage's. He's also a very fervent admirer of Miss Borealis and her work. It wouldn't surprise me if that admiration extended to her possessions. For fans like him, trinkets and mementos are a way to get closer to the one they admire. Fallen stardust. Enjoy your drinks. I like coming here. It lets me forget everything else for a bit. I'm an artist. It's a bad place for tourists these days. We want to find a place to stay while we're here. I've heard that the Hotel Voli is top notch. This song has got me so zoned. Euphorica, blah, blah, blah. This place is where it's at.
Riverside's a bad place for you. Stick to the main plaza, unless you like getting soaked by the rain. Feel free to disturb me. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. if it's my things or my time. I get that. There's definitely a line you shouldn't cross. But sounds like it all worked out in the end. I've got my slate, which means the people will get their trip. Inspiration's like a wave. Sometimes it's hard to catch it before the break. That's what this slate is. A still wave, a feeling frozen in time, and I appreciate you bringing it back to me. Yeah, it looked like nothing was downloaded or tampered with. I'm almost glad it was taken by a fan instead of a competitor. Would have been awful to lose that thing. I was working on a brand new concept piece about floating into the center of existence. I'm not feeling it yet. I'm still working out the last few sections, but eventually I'll give it a spin in the Astral Lounge. Thanks again for finding that thing. Next time, I'll try and keep an eye on it. See you on the flip.
Tracker's Alliance always finds their mark. Yeah. What do you want? <sighs> Before you continue, let me save you some time. If you're having a problem with your power or complain about your rates, you need to contact our customer service department. Anything else? Uh, you must be zoned out of your mind, because there's no way anyone sober would say something like that. It was Estelle Vincent, wasn't it? That bitch. I knew I should have kept that somewhere else. Here, take this pass. It should get you through the storage room entry to the facility. I'm warning you, though. Once you're inside, you're trespassing in a high security zone. That means they shoot on sight. Good luck. You're going to need it. I suppose if I don't explain, a copy of that recording you found might end up on the next SSNN report. Okay. Fair enough. A few years back, the previous CEO of Jennerdyne went missing. As the COO, I was next in line for the job. Instead, Bayou muscled his way into the company and gave me an ultimatum. Either back up his bullshit Mr. Harada identity, or I'm gone. I had no choice. But I decided right then and there, I was going to do whatever I could to take what was rightfully mine. If that meant seducing Bayou to tip him off balance, then so be it. Luckily for me, Mike has been incredibly understanding about the whole thing. What do you think happened? Bayou started sticking his nose into Jennerdyne's business, all but outright demanding a cut of the profits. In response, the CEO made a huge mistake by threatening to take his grievances to the FC. His shuttle never arrived. Need I say more? Micah is the only person in this godforsaken city that's kept me from going completely under. She doesn't want money, doesn't use me for influence or as a stepping stone to get ahead. She loves And when this stupid bullshit is over, and Bayou is ten fathoms deep under Neil. What is this? A job interview? I'm the COO of the company, second to the top. Right under our esteemed CEO, Mr. Harada, also known as Benjamin Bayou. So when you ask me what I do for Jennerdyne, the answer is nothing. The Bayous run the show, and I tread water. The salary helps, of course, but at the end of the day, I'm just a joke. Sitting in an office to make things look legitimate. Keeps them off the Freestar Collective's radar. They might actually step in if they discover that the same person controlling the city's regulations and bylaws benefits financially from them. If you haven't figured it out by now, Benjamin has a stranglehold on the city. You can't take a piss without him charging you after flush. Try and get in his way, and then he uses Neon Security to beat you senseless, or the Sioga Syndicate to make you disappear. If you had to work with Brayson Bayou, you'd understand. The man is still a totally incompetent fool, and he's running our company into the ground. 
the worst part of it is that he's Administrator Bayu's brother. So I can't fire him. I can't reassign him. I can't even yell at him. It's like having a cut on your body and you're helplessly watching yourself bleed to death. Except in our case, we're hemorrhaging money. If you get caught in Genardine, that's on you. Good luck. Hey. down here. Oh, how can these workers stand the smell of rotten fish and goodness knows what else? Xenofresh Seafood. Welcome to Xenofresh Seafood. Would you like to try some trawl? Ah, oh, trawl is an extruded polypaste blend made from premium organic seafood caught only a few hundred meters from our lo It's healthy, tasty. Please refrain from insulting Xenofresh products while you're on the promo premise. Ah, uh, while you're in the store. If you wish to register a complaint, please fill out one of our comment slates and submit it to our corporate office. Uh, yeah, we're currently out of comment slates. Oh, this is absolutely hopeless. Just buy your disgusting fish paste in a tube and let's get out of here. In the meantime, may I suggest you try a tube of trawl? It's won the Voli Benthic Cuisine Award nine years in a row. Prepare to know the true meaning of flavor. Give me a break. I work at this shop all day. I mean, it totally sucks. Smelling like fish paste all the time. It doesn't scrub. Look, I can't really talk about this. If they see me talking to a customer about anything but food, I'm gonna get fired, and I can't. If they boot me out of here, I don't get my employee allotment of Aurora. Just give me a Yeah, bye. I
must be a lot of valuable tech disappearing from Genodyne to justify all the scrutiny of their own employees.
nothing. Nothing!
out of here! Please, don't shoot. If you want the encryption cipher, you're, you're welcome to it. There's no need for all this violence. <laughs> uh, when you access the computer in the power core, it sends a notification to be here. I knew you were coming, I, I just didn't know when. Look, there's no need to be angry with me. I I'm on your side. I I'm not trying to trick you. You want the cipher? I it's yours. At this point, I'd do anything to get back at my brother. He deserves everything he's got coming to him. I think you could safely say that most of Neon would agree. You know... I've spent my entire life living in Ben's shadow. Everything always works out for him. While, I, while I've been bouncing from one job to the next, barely keeping afloat. And all the while, he laughs at me behind my back. <laughs> Thinks it's hilarious to make fun of his, his stupid brother. Like I wouldn't eventually find out. Tyrants like your brother eventually fall. It's inevitable. Perhaps you should just give it some time. Yeah, that would be nice. Indeed. The only real harm you can do to Benjamin Bayou is through his bank account. You know what? I am sick to death of being pushed around. It's my turn to take control for once. The passcode for my terminal is GEN-41A18. That should give you access to the cipher and whatever else you need. I'm getting out of here while I still can. After you're done, I suggest you do the same. Because he's a two-faced son of a bitch. That's not like I should be surprised. When we were younger, we never... I mean, he's 11 years older than I am. We had two different mothers. Might as well have been from two separate families. Well, that's an understatement. I never knew my actual mother. She was my father's mistress, and I was told she vanished from Neon when I was only two years old. Ben's mother, she didn't give a crap about me. Wouldn't even let me call her mom. I just had to call her Liliana. <laughs> Can you imagine? And then there's Dad. So buried in the day-to-day -day operations of Neon, he didn't have time to pay attention to his bastard son. Yeah, maybe. Or, he could just be a... Look, I appreciate what you're trying to do. And that's why I gave you the encryption cipher. Anything I can do to stick it to Ben? Do me a favor and don't tell my brother we talked.
you are. What kept you? I believe we have a lot to discuss. It's obvious you're here to meet someone. Fortunately for them, they rented this VIP room under a false name. I assume that same someone provided you with that clever little virus you installed into Genodyne systems. All too well. You know, I should give credit where it's due. That virus is quite impressive. It will cost me tens of thousands of credits to remove. That's the last time I'll ever take the Crimson Fleet's capabilities for granted. Normally, I might be inclined to accept such a generous offer, but in this case, I'm going to decline. You know why? It's because I don't negotiate with pirates. They don't understand commitments or contracts. How to get the deal done with finesse. No. For your kind, it's only brute force and violence. Shoot first, take whatever you want, and ask questions later. That's not how I do business. It may seem that way, but for every rival I've had thrown into the ocean, I've made two times as many legitimate deals. Look, I'm not here to debate. I'm here to make an offer. All you have to do is tell me who's profiting from the virus you've uploaded. In return, I'll let you leave the city alive. You make my skin crawl, Bayou. Really? That's the story you're going with? Very well. There's a body that Neon Security is going to be discovering very soon. One with concrete evidence that links you to the murder. I'd say you have about one hour to leave this place before you have a price on your head. You'd have someone killed to pin the crime on us. Oh, you're a wretched excuse for a human being, Bayou. So, I assume this concludes our little arrangement, and you'll be leaving our fair city. Oh, when you get back to the Key, be certain to give Neva and Delgado my warmest regards. Take it easy.
Woodside's a bad place for tourists these days. you're back. Sorry about the whole Benjamin Bay you think at the Astral Lounge, but I didn't have much of a choice. Can you believe the nerve of that smug son of a bitch? The man is priceless. So I've heard. Throwing yourself under the bus like that. Ouch. You are one crazy son of a bitch. Yeah, I'm pretty much dead in the water at this point. Since Bayou flagged the virus, I can't risk accessing the system now. All that work I did trying to crack Jennerdine is gone. Now I'm in a bit of a bind. The prep work for this job put me in deep for a bunch of cash, and I have no way to pay it all back. That's pretty cool of you to offer, but I know what he's gonna say. Sorry, Estelle. This was your scheme. You're on your own. Believe me, he's not going to be much help. Look, I was hoping you'd pick up on what I was trying to ask. What the hell with it. I'll just ask. Can you cut me in for a little bit of cash you're making on this job? I mean, I did get you inside and practically hand you the data on the grid. She's right, you know. Without her help, you never would have found your way into Genodyne. I appreciate that. I really do. Having each other's back is what makes the fleet stronger, you know? How much uh, are you willing to part with? Wow, that's way more than I expected. I had no idea you'd be so generous. I had no idea either, but we do appreciate everything you've done, Estelle. All right, I guess we're done here. Tell Delgado if he ever needs me for anything else. I've still got his back. And hey, you won't be hearing Rook from me anymore. As far as I'm concerned, you're one of us now. Lifeblood of the fleet. If anyone tries to tell you otherwise, you send them to talk to me. Now, how did I know you were gonna ask me that? Honestly, it doesn't matter if I believe that Crix's legacy exists or not. What's important is that I believe in Delgado. If the man thinks that chasing shadows is gonna make us rich, then who the hell am I to judge, right? I mean, I'm not gonna jump off a cliff for him or anything, but hey, he needs an extra ship at his side, he's got it. I hear things are heating up back at the quay, so I might fire up my bird and head over to check things out. Rumor has it that Delgado has some solid info on the Crix's legacy story he's been hawking for the... If there's even a chance that it's true, I want to be there when Shinya Vos starts splitting the loot, if you catch my meaning. Completely ruined? Nah. I was hoping it would stay on Jennerdine's mainframe for the long term, but hey, at least it's already fed me a huge amount of data. Nix really knows what he's doing, though he charged me about six months worth of earnings. With any luck, I'll be able to recoup my costs in no time. Put in a good word to Delgado for me, will ya?